Cheers! What's up, everybody? Welcome back to a new episode of Hospitality Secrets Podcast. Paul Sfrilia here, and I'm super excited to introduce my, my new surprise guest that I'm having uh, this week. The, the guest that I'm having today, it's, it's from USA, but now he's stuck in Singapore. <laughs> he's uh, Actually, he, he started working in the industry 19 years ago, 2000, uh, 2001, 2002. Two, two, two. 2002 yeah. and uh, he started uh, working in the industry he's an ex-marine and he started working as a bartender then uh, everybody started knowing him from from the employees only and uh, uh, all the world started knowing him from the, the the movie hey bartender and then it's his story he started uh, climbing the 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 hierarchy in the employees only till the the manager and then he he is the co-owner of employees only in singapore and i yep. think it, he needs no no more introduction because mm -hmm. steve schneider is here and i want to welcome him thank you very much steve for accepting the invitation welcome to hospitality secrets my pleasure my pleasure paul it's good to see you again it's good to see you again. always a pleasure to see to see people who are passionate about the same topic that i am Absolutely. So Let's where where are this. you now? For for I'm the audience. I'm stuck in Singapore. I'm not stuck in Singapore. Let's <laughs> uh, back that up. The first words I say, I screw up. How's that? <laughs> so I was stuck in New York since late 2019, and I've been trying to get back into Singapore for so long. Um, I have business in Shanghai as well, so I was trying to get back into Shanghai and Singapore. I kept getting denied, but finally they approved me. So last month I come here to Singapore. I had to do a mandatory. 21 day quarantine wow. locked up in the hotel room wow, wow. um i you know played a lot of video games bro i'll tell you man <laughs> uh, a lot of call of duty if you know what i mean stuck, and, uh, stuck in the hotel yeah, room yeah you have to do something yeah but then there was a spike in cases and uh the bar's been closed since like right before i got out of quarantine so i actually haven't even had a chance i've been here a, a month and i haven't even had a chance to to see the bar in action but i've been able to get reconnected with business, reacclimated with, uh, with the staff. And, you know, we have a lot of plans moving forward and I've been really excited about, you know, what we got going on in Singapore. The, the staff here is great and the, the atmosphere is always great and the vibe is great. They just, you know, we just have to, uh, it's gotta be safe. It's gotta be right. And the government has to let us open. We're a high volume bar, man. I'm a high volume bartender at a high volume bar that ain't allowed to be high volume. So I've been, in my opinion, pretty fucking useless the last uh, year and a half. But I'm just, you know, trying to trying to stay positive. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I mean? and, and and do things. Yeah, yeah. What yeah. what projects are you working during this uh, this period? Uh, honestly, again, being a high volume bartender and being able to only having to do limited capacity and being slow, man, that shit does not make me happy. It makes me miserable. I I love the exhilarating feeling of being high volume, being in the weeds. And I haven't been in the weeds in a year and a half, so I've been perpetually bored every day of my life. So my projects, what I'm trying to work on, man, uh, I'm trying to stay young. You know what I mean? <laughs> I told you, I've been in this business a long time, and it seems like I got old overnight, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Next thing I know, I look around, I'm like, why do I feel so fucking old? You know what I mean? It's not why working, though, trying back, to stay young. Uh, why do I have, yeah, my why back, do I have my the knees. pain back? <laughs> Yeah, I'm getting ugly, man. My teeth are getting yellow. Uh, you know, I got to I gotta try to work on my body instead because uh, you get ugly when you get older, man. That's just the way it happens. And I'm finding out firsthand, bro. You're maturing like whiskey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, thank you. You're really kind. You are You are a bartender. You can bullshit. Um, no, honestly, uh, I'm, I'm just, uh, when it comes to business, man, projects, I got a lot of stuff planned for after the pandemic. Um, honestly, I believe I have a certain skill set that, um, not many people in the world could do. I just, I, I really feel that way uh, when I look in the mirror. So I'm going to be needed again soon. So in the meantime, I'm just kind of staying low. I'm focused, looking at the numbers, focusing, trying to keep as many people employed as I can, you know, just, just trying to keep my head above water. You know, I'm the last guy getting paid these, these next couple of years and I'm okay with it, but yeah. my projects are just keeping, keeping, keeping the place afloat, keeping people with jobs. And then me, I'll have my chance to, I'll have my chance to 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 rise again. Right now, it's all about other people in my life, you know. Yeah, and and you 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 help the 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 employees to to. Yeah, that's the only thing we can do at this point. I mean, it's more important for them, you know. Like, it's more important for the long term 
employees, uh, you know, they, we, we watch their back, you know, but we got to keep the business afloat too. It's a hard juggling act, man. You know, you got to, uh, you know, it's, it's just, there's no right answer during this, this quarantine, except, you know, just survive. And the places that, that didn't, you know, bless them. But yet again, there's gonna, there's, there's loads of talent out there. I know places reopening in New York right now, and they're having a hard time even staffing people. Talk yeah. to people in the UK. Um, you know, there's like, like nobody really wants to work at this point. So it's, so that's been kind of difficult as well. Um, keeping the place afloat with half the staff now with places opening like hundred percent again. And bro, people have been locked up for like a year and a half almost, you know, they've been restricted. They're ready to go nuts. I don't know if you've been watching the, the NBA playoffs, but it's like, it seems like every game's some wild fucking assholes getting thrown out the game, you know, or like, like, a, you know, a fan is getting ejected or arrested throwing things on the court. People are losing their minds, man. And I think they bars, want a party. we gotta, we gotta, exactly. We gotta brace ourselves, but bars, uh, bartenders, bar owners, be careful. When people are at the party again, they're, they're coming out, man. And they're going to come out hard. So we it's like, hang in there, hang in there and enjoy the quiet time while you can, because I, I, I firmly believe, you know, once the world repairs itself, uh, you know, hopefully very soon, um, then we can just get back to doing what we love. And me personally, I love the wild atmosphere and I can't wait to get back to it. To go back in the behind the stick. <laughs> yeah, go nuts. <laughs> Feel that pressure, you know? You know, you're really busy and you got guests leaning over the bar trying to grab you and you know, it's like you feel like a like a caged animal almost. It's like, <laughs> it's a good feeling. You got that, oh, you're like a Rottweiler, you know, like guarding, you know, guarding the uh, the gate. You know, I don't know. That was always my mentality, and it's never gonna change. I realized again, I'm not, I'm, I'm who I am. I don't want to like make all these pivots and shit like that, and try to change my business or change who I am as a bartender. I'm just gonna be me. It's been working for me for all this time. I do well. I think. You know, I treat my staff well. The product is awesome. I've got several different places. I'm just going to stick to my guns, uh, you know, from now on. And I'm just going to do what I do, you know? Yeah. How, how many places do you have? How many, how many places do you operate? Uh, well, I'm owner of uh, or partner or investor, silent or something. I have a share or whatever in six different places. Six? Uh, yeah. I'm only heavily involved in a couple in a few, actually in three of them, um, the Elysian Cafe in Hoboken, New Jersey. Um, I have the well, significant percentage there where I, I do the menu and the bar stuff. Um, obviously, employees only Singapore, which is my number one. We just turned five this past weekend at the time of recording. And uh, that, that's the one that set the tone for everything. And then I have the odd couple in Shanghai with Shingo Gokan. And then, but that, of course, I, I still haven't been able to get back into Shanghai. But um, You know, the team's doing great over there. They're rocking it. They're doing fine. Um, so I, I'm trying to get back in, but, you know, I'm, I'm vaccinated. I got all this shit going for me. Well, I just need to apply, get a special visa, and uh, hopefully I can get back in there. But uh, so I'd say I only am really hands-on with three places. Um, out of the, six. the other ones are just like monetary investments or just silent shares or something like that. So you are you know? juggling with a lot of... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know that's why you you, you hire people smarter than you, uh, yeah, hire people better than you. Advice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, it's like that's the way it works for me. I always thought <laughs> I was smarter than my bosses. Uh, <laughs> now, now I I I like to think my staff is smarter than me, and that's how it goes. Everybody gets smarter than everybody. <laughs> nah, but uh, honestly, like I, my main role in a lot of the the bars that I open or or take over or whatever is more or less setting the groundwork, training mm. the staff teaching of my style, especially inventory management, uh, just ethos, I guess, and just kind of teach how I like things done. And then, you know, you, you pay staff to maintain that and hopefully you reap, you know, rewards at the end. Mm, it's like nice. you put in money, you gamble on yourself, and then you, you're hoping that, that it works out with the staff. And then hopefully at the end, you get a little bit. That's kind of, that's kind of what I, what I do. And uh, it's been working for me, but you know, some places better than others. I've for made sure, some yeah. poor decisions. I made some good decisions. So you are gambling but, in you know, the hospitality industry. No? <laughs> uh, yeah, sort of, but not really. I'm gambling on myself always. You know? yeah, 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 yeah. More or less. <laughs> and uh, it's fun and all, but I don't know how much longer, how many more places I could open. I got a couple, I got a couple places that I can't really announce here, but um, I don't know how much longer, you know, as again, I'm, I'm, 
I'm in my late thirties, pushing, I'm pushing 40 soon in a couple of years here. And I could still perform behind that bar. I could still hustle. I could still do it, but I'm, I'm thinking about my fifties at this point. And do I really want to do it? Cause my, my body's starting to break down a little bit, man. My knees, my knees are hurting. My back's hurting. Do I really want to do this another 20 years behind the bar? Maybe I do, maybe I don't, but I want an option of, I don't know, with these businesses. Eventually I want to end up, uh, owning real estate. I, I do own a uh, property in Jersey. So that's been cool. I've, I have a, an opportunity to like get experience of being a property owner in New Jersey. So that's hopefully going to provide at least a little bit of stability with me, like in the long term, or, you know, give me some valuable experience as a landowner. And then so you I can, can get a next one and another one, another one. That's what I'm going And then you for. can bartending, you can go in, uh, inside the bar just for, for fun, for pleasure. No? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Once in a I while. Wanna not to... That's my goal. I just want to do whatever the fuck I want to do. That's what everybody I think wants to do, right? Yeah. You know? yeah I'm yeah. on the way. I'm on my way. <laughs> See, I still do whatever the fuck I want to do, except I get in trouble. You know what I do? <laughs> <laughs> Someday I'm going to be able to do whatever I want to do and not get in trouble for it. That's kind of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's kind of the plan. <laughs> do I, I don't do know my outlook has changed a lot and I, I consider myself lucky and I'm grateful that I get to 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 do what I love every day as well you know because not everybody has that luxury and I don't expect everybody to understand but mm. uh, when I walk into employees only Singapore um, I I'm in love man my heart is is full and it's really like kind of sappy and sort of uh, soft to me saying but it's the truth man I love that fucking place and everything about it and uh you know no, nothing nothing's perfect but but uh, the way places make you feel and the, the amount of pride you have in your own in your own like hands and your own work and your own business and everybody involved i don't know i uh it's priceless consider myself pretty lucky yeah 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 for sure nice nice where can the listeners find your work where 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 can they find you in the in on the internet uh, i've been hiding man uh, I haven't, I, I, I no longer like social media as a platform. Like I, I, I just posted on Instagram for the first time in, I don't know, six months. Um, I post maybe twice a year. I don't know. I just, I don't like it. I, uh, I, I thought it was a good idea. Instagram, Facebook, I thought it was a great idea, but it's uh, for me, it's just, it doesn't do it for me anymore. It's, it kind of brings me down to be honest. Like I don't like it anymore. It's just too much of the world. Uh, so I'd like to just kind of stick to myself, keep to myself. And uh, I don't know, just try to be off the grid for a little while. Maybe someday I'll come back with a big bang. I had my podcast for a very long time and I'm actually considering bringing it back and talking with you is actually motivating me. Ooh, yeah. I might, I don't know, we'll see, we'll see. Because if I bring it back, I just don't want it to be like, I don't know, just, a, I want to, I don't know. I got to put my own twist on everything that I do. So I got to still thinking about what I can do to bring back my podcast, but make it my own and not make it the same as everybody else's. I don't know. Doing um, something different. Yeah. 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 yeah you need to some innovate. kind of creative outlet. Yeah. I, that's the best part about, it. I don't know if you feel the same way, but the best part about for me, when I had my podcast was that it was a creative like outlet, but it was also it, like it covered my hobbies. And it also covered my business and my life. It covered everything about me, everything that I love. But it was a way for me to just be creative and, and almost like therapy, I guess. It's like self-therapy for me to do my podcast and just talk into a mic about whatever the fuck I want about, you know, yeah. and say yeah. whatever the hell I want. Yeah, yeah, and, you know, yeah, and it's just it's a nice, it's like talking to a therapist, really, except, you know, you, you know, you you're get talking uh, to a mic, not so. talking back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, so maybe that's why. Otherwise, I am on Instagram. Uh, just search Steve Schneider. You know, you'll find me. Uh, uh, I'm easy to find. Um, but I've just been t keeping a low profile, Paul. I just, How about uh, the places, the the bars, employees only? Uh... Oh, employees only Singapore. Hit it up. The Odd Couple in Shanghai, Elysian Cafe in Hoboken, New Jersey, which is a beautiful, beautiful restaurant. I worked there. Jeez, I don't know. 16, 17 years ago, I, yeah. I was a bartender there. Yeah, yeah, I was a bartender you took the there. Place? You went back. Yeah, I yeah, want to buy it. <laughs> yeah, I no, nah, because I used to work for this guy. His name was Eugene. He actually owns the building. Mm. They own the bar and the building. Okay. And great guy, nice guy. Uh, so I found out a few years back. This is around uh, maybe 2018, 17, 18. Um, I found out he sold one of his other restaurants to a longtime employee. So immediately I was like, oh shit, what about this place? So, uh, you know, he's getting older. He doesn't want to 
he owns property. He's getting old. He doesn't want to run a restaurant every day. It's exhausting. So I talked to the chef, Travis Young, and he wants to buy the place. And, and me, I, I, I did pretty well out here in Singapore. So I was like, all right, let's do this. And then uh, later in October of 2018, we purchased a beautiful restaurant. It's the oldest restaurant in Hoboken from 1895. Whoa. Original walls and ceilings. No, what was the name? The Elysian Cafe, E-L-Y-S-I-A-N, Elysian, like Elysian Fields, like the place where the gods go when they perish. And uh, yeah, it's in Hoboken, New Jersey, which is the birthplace of baseball and the birthplace of Frank Sinatra. That's what we got in Hoboken. Yeah. Nice, so, nice, nice, nice. Yeah, nice. apparently we're one block away from where baseball was invented. I don't really? know how true it is. Cool. Yeah, I don't know how true it is, but... It's a good story. Uh, there's a plaque. There's a plaque. There's a monument. That's what it says. That's the story. I'm sticking to it. Birthplace yes. of baseball, Hoboken, New Jersey. Yep. Oh, we got wow. a statue. So there you go. <laughs> it's, it, it's official. There is a place. It must be true. They built a statue for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> good, good, good. So you are doing things, even though with the, with the pandemics, you are still uh, running businesses in the, in the hospitality industry. But yeah. where... Yeah, please, please. No, I, I, more or less, I, I put my faith in the system, uh, put my faith in, 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 in partners. I'm doing my part. Whatever they need, I'm going to help because I'm more of the creative process guy. I, I, do, I do do back-end stuff when, in regards to inventory control, but I'm very specific. I'm not like a super administration guy that's going to know all the loans that we can get or know all this stuff. That's not my area. I, I deal with – I'm like the freaking drill sergeant, you know, like if there's no troops to train – I mean, I'm kind of, what am I going to do? <laughs> <laughs> so that's, so I, I put my faith in others to just, uh, to, to do this. And if they need assistance from me or help in any way, I'm mm. a phone call away. But in the meantime, I've spent this pandemic really focusing on, on, on family, friends, and just, and my, and myself trying to just, again, stay young and healthy, try to stay handsome, you know, it's not working, but I'm, I'm doing my best. <laughs> It's working. It's working very well. That's all I wanted to hear. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. <laughs> you are doing great. <laughs> Thanks, bro. I'm just teasing, man. Yeah, but uh, where did uh, this uh, this journey started? Can you tell us a bit about your uh, your history, about your backstory in the hospitality industry for the listeners? Well, yeah, I uh, let me tell you about being in the in the U.S. military. They don't pay us too much, so once you're in. You know, once you go through all the training and stuff, uh, if you don't get deployed, meaning if you don't go out to sea or go somewhere, I mean, it just becomes a, uh, a nine to five job, except, you know, you wear camouflage every day. And so you have, you could do whatever you really want on your spare time. So I was in Washington, D.C. And I had a lot of spare time because I had a head injury. So I had a lot of brain surgery and I had to do all this like rehabilitation and, uh, It left me with a lot of time. So I walked by this bar in Georgetown, D.C. It said, uh, help wanted, no hiring. Whatever, let's do it. And uh, that's kind of where I got started. It was like a smelly old dive bar with disco shots and 18 beers on tap and live music. You know, I get the chance to beat up some kids from Georgetown. <laughs> you know, it was great. You know, it was like young kid, you know, the aggression and everybody. You know, it was just like. College bar, college shit. Um, but it was fun as hell. And I, I didn't make too much money doing it, but I had a blast. And at least I was able to offset some money that I would, wasn't making in the military. And I got myself in a bunch of credit card debt because when you're, when you're a soldier, Marine, whatever, uh, there's like the local Navy bank, you know, they'll give you a credit card for like 500 bucks, you know, because they know you got steady money. And then they'll increase it to a thousand, two thousand. Next thing you know, I'm in like 50 grand of debt, you know, with like a high, with like a high percent. Every time I'd pay a credit card bill, I'd end up owing more money somehow. I don't know, you know, when you pay the, pay the bare minimum because of all their interest and shit. So, uh, so that put me in a hole and I was like, man, I need to make some fucking money, you know? So uh, bartending. It not only did it did it give me a, a creative outlet, like I was talking about, it was something completely different from the military, yet I found a lot of similarities, you know, working with a team, you know, um, just, just like working under high pressure, stuff like that, um, having discipline. I, I saw a lot of parallels and stuff. So I was able to do what I did there, but also do it there in the military and do it behind the bar. And uh, 
I wasn't able to make any real money until I entered a, a speed bartending competition, which is like a 30 year old charity based competition for like dive bar bartenders and like, you know, nightclub guys. And I won three times and I won a shitload of money and I was able to pay off a lot of debt. And that took, that got the attention of this guy from uh, Las Vegas, who was, he was from the DC area. His name was John Hogan. And he did like consulting, but more or less, he was an adult who did bar stuff for a living. I only knew a bunch of other young kids, you know, I didn't really, and then the older ones, the old heads, when I was coming up, they were like pieces of shit, you know, like they were like, they were there not, they were there not because they were successful, you know, they were there because they were failures, you know, and I was going down that route as well. So I met a guy who was successful and it was an adult and had his shit together and did bar things. So he took me under his wing and he taught me a lot of cool stuff. And, uh, you know, I was flaring and I was doing, uh, um, you know, making fucking olives spheres out of like olive brine and shit like that and foams uh, and stuff, yeah, yeah, a proper yeah. free pouring, all this other stuff. It was great. So he pretty much piqued my interest and in I was like, holy shit, we can do this. We can do this for a living. Like this guy does it for a living. He seems like a happy guy. He's got his shit together. Um, let's go, let's do this. And I know from the very first time I worked at my shift in DC that I could do a better job than the guy running the place, you know? So I was like, I want to do that. That's, this seems like fun. I've always wanted to be my own boss. You know, when, even when I was in the military, I wanted to dig the holes until it was time to tell other people where to dig. You know, I, I always aim high for whatever, whatever I can do. You know, I want to, I just don't want to just be doing the same shit all the time. So anyway, um, that led me to uh, back home after I got discharged in the military. I worked at this place, Deletion Cafe, which I'm now a partner of. And one thing led to another. It's a really long story, and it's out there. But I, I became, a, I got recruited to work at Employees Only. And that's the first time I saw really like-minded people like me. And um, I think it completed the final aspect of what I needed. And that was, I think, like real mentorship, you know? It wasn't just somebody teaching me how to work. It was teaching me why, why, you know, like not just what to do, but how to do it and why. to do things. And, like, yeah, work yeah. with people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, that's when I kind of, that's when I think I, I reached my, my full potential as a bartender is once I got that. And then um, obviously it was a stepping stone. The founders of employees only were former bartenders like me. It's like, Hey, what's stopping me from doing the same thing. And then uh, throughout the years of hard work and managing the bar, I did pretty well. I was offered an opportunity to come to Singapore and uh, you know, uh, took that leap of faith. It was hard to leave New York, you know, you leave a great job, making a ton of money. It's like, how, do, how the hell are you going to like go book a one way, flight to a different country it's it's hard man and i'm not the only person who have done that kind of stuff you know a lot of people they you know they they travel to for a, a, just a better life or a more secure future and i just i don't know i just uh, it just felt right and i just think it was at the right age i had the right experience and i was like all right this is it now or never and it worked out for me so mm -hmm. that one thing led to another i was able to invest in multiple projects from there and there and there uh, and it now grew uh, exponentially yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I've I've been uh, overall pretty pretty uh, I don't know, lucky, grateful, fortunate. You fortunate, worked maybe. you worked so lucky. hard. You yeah, worked yeah, yeah, so yeah. hard to become lucky, you know, and you become lucky. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've been fortunate, and uh, and I, I don't forget that shit. And I know, like, you know, I, I try to talk to like like the staff and the apprentices and the and the bartenders and stuff, and I, I try to see where where they're at and what they want to do. And mm -hmm. if I can lend a hand or any advice, it's cool. But like, I always tell them, you know, like I'm here for you. I'm going to like, give you an opportunity to make your mistakes just like I did. Um, learn from your mistakes and then try to get better. And if you need uh, advice, you need assistance, you need help, I'm here for you. You know, mm -hmm. I just, nice. yeah, great. That's all I can do at this point, you know, mm -hmm. supporting, yeah. supporting. Yeah. 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 How, how yeah, would you... I, I, just, I, I don't like the I don't like the the limelight anymore, man. I'm just I'm having a blast sitting back and enjoying everything. I've You're on the back for. seat now. Yeah, I'm chilling. I'm having a good time. I'm chilling, I'm trying to stay young, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need to do it. <laughs> yeah. 
How would you describe your life in hospitality industry in one sentence? If you were to distill the whole life that you had in this industry, how would you distill it in just one sentence? Oh, fuck, man. It's hard <laughs> to do. You know, I'm almost 20 years in one sentence. <laughs> um, so let's see. Uh, maybe I think it could be broken down into several parts. You know, there's, there's different... I guess, chapters of, of people's careers and lives and stuff like that. And I like people to say that, yeah, Steve Schneider was reliable, you know? He was always a reliable colleague, you know? He was consistent. And, you know, I think that's, that's, that's good. Yeah, everyone always knew what they were getting from me. I, I threw no surprises out there. I was always myself unapologetically. And I was always reliable. If anybody ever needed anything, my colleagues, they know they could call me. I'll cover a shift just like that. So consistency, reliability, and uh, I guess longevity, you know, like he's done it for a while. And I, and that those things mean a lot to me, you know. Anybody could have like a hot two years of bartending and then become a brand ambassador, you know. Yeah. And then like whatever. <laughs> it's like me, I just want to be the bar guy. I just want to do my thing, be the bar guy for a long time. Um, do the thing. Yeah, so I think I think yeah, I think that would be a, a sentence. If I want people to talk about me, uh, I would like them to talk about my my consistency, my reliability, and my longevity. Really, consistency, reliability, and longevity. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and they'd probably say that I was an asshole too, but it's. Okay. <laughs> I'm a I'm a kind I'm a. <laughs> I'm a kind man, Paul. I'm very kind. I'm caring. I'm just, I'm just not very That's nice. That's why you're in this kid. industry because yeah, you yeah. care. Yeah. If, if you wouldn't yeah, care, care, you wouldn't stick to the industry. Yeah. My problem is I'm a ball buster too much. I, I fuck around too much, and I was getting in trouble. I'm always <laughs> ball buster, just it doesn't mean nothing. I'm just, I'm a, I'm a clown. I'm a comedian. You know. Yeah, but. we need, we need it in the hospitality industry for sure. We need to to entertain to make people have fun i mean that's our yeah. role here no yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh you you said something that i really like uh, a lot always myself unapologetically yeah. so i think this would be the title of this episode <laughs> so i guess so, man so good yeah. dude i'm telling you like i just I, i'm always Listen, if you want an interviewer, if you want a bartender that's going to be like the pillar of society and like, you know, a hero to the people, that's not me, man. <laughs> you know, I'm honestly, that's not who I am. It's not, I never try to front, never try to bullshit you. You know, I'm just, I'm kind of a, I'm the last of like an old school type of bartender, but I got the passion of just the same as the younger kids, you know, but I have this unschool, this old school kind of like, I, I like, I like, uh, dangerous i like danger you know dangerous mm. bars where you not not maybe not danger is probably not the word like the danger you feel when you're on a roller coaster not not the danger when you're mm. in a dark alley yeah, like safe like danger when, yeah 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 oh but it's all just staged where you walk into a bar and plays only singapore's got that you walk in there and just because of the lighting and the music and the way everybody presents themselves you're just unsure you're like what 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 is this place why am i here <laughs> you feel you feel sort of like i always describe it as like like walking through the underbelly of a city like gotham city and shit and you see all like the villains there mingling with some of the police officers and the politicians <laughs> and they're all there's the blue collar white collar you know good bad all sort of there's a lot of tension in the room where it's like what's gonna happen is something gonna happen is something weird gonna happen but it's all under control but you just mm. feel the this set you close your eyes and you walk into the bar and you feel a certain way that's something that i always try to focus on with all my bars and my whole career is just to feel this danger you know this this thrill this this exhilarating danger and i love that shit in bars but anyway i don't know how i got got on this rant but uh yeah i'm just always gonna be me i'm not i'm no fucking hero or anything man I'm a bar guy from the underground and I kind of like it under here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good, good, good. I have no opinions. I have, I have opinions, but I have no opinions at the same time. I'm just really able to, to bend at the will of my guests, you know, and nice, I appreciate that. Nice, 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 nice. You, you fit very well in the hospitality industry. Yeah. I always wanted to be just this passive observer of society. You know, mm. everything's going crazy around and I'm just there 
Watch. One Manhattan. Here you go. You know, <laughs> like, yep. The, like, yeah, everything's fucking burning. And I'm just like, <laughs> what can I do for you right now? You know, is there anything I can do? I can't fix any of this shit, but I can get you a drink. You know what I mean? Have so, some water. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. That's all. That's, that's sort of a, you know, I'm kind of laughing and I'm, I'm saying some crazy shit, but I, I hope everybody understands the, what I'm trying to say and the vibe and energy I'm trying to put mm, out with this. Yeah. It's like, I do care. I care about the people around me. I care about my, my guests, my customers, my, my, my staff, my, my partners and everybody and my friends and family. But I got in this business because I just wanted to observe the world. And that's what mm. I've been doing lately in the last year and a half. And it's been pretty fulfilling. <laughs> you, you kind of like it uh, observing yeah, i love it uh, <laughs> and you gotta have a good sense of humor to be in this business otherwise yeah you, yeah you're not gonna be you're not gonna never gonna reach your full potential if no, I don't no. know. You need... I think drunk people are funny as hell. Yeah, yeah. So I'm in the <laughs> we right. We get business. them yeah. drunk and then we'll... <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but obviously, you know, there's there's a line. There's always a line. There's a line always, and you never know where the line is unless you cross it every now and mm. then, or you see somebody cross it, then you know where the line is. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's. That's 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 life in the bar business. It's a series of, you know, finding the line between you know wild and uh you know acceptable not acceptable while this net creative you want to be creative or you want to play it safe you know you want to be edgy or do you want to be just like um sterile have, have you've always gotta yeah. you always gotta try shit and find what works for you and find a balance and uh always be in control at least you know don't let things get out of control because mm. when things are dangerous and wild and but you're not in control of it that's when you could have some really, really big problems at the bar and that's what you want to avoid yeah. but the illusion that's what that's what you try to create the illusion yeah. of, the, of yeah danger. the atmosphere of of, of danger yeah. but not quite dangerous yeah. just the atmosphere yeah, as you yeah. said yeah 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 yeah, yeah we all yeah. like it a bit we mm -hmm. the adrenaline yeah that's you know that's why like bars haven't been the same for me i've been going out to bars outdoor cafes and stuff that are open in new york we could open for 25 percent at one point you know 50 percent, and it was so miserable I'm like, this is not why I go out to bars. This isn't the shit. If I wanted to get drunk, I'd just go home and, you know, make it myself. You know, I miss that atmosphere. And I miss it so much. But, you know, slowly but surely, we're opening and we're uh, we'll back get back and people there. Will party, it gives yeah. you something. Yeah, it gives you something to look forward to. And uh, I'm a patient man. I told you longevity is really important. Mm. You know, consistency, patience. Let, it, let things unfold the way they're going to unfold. And I'll be back when it's my time. <laughs> we'll be back why do you think the businesses from the hospitality industry fail what was the main reason why the businesses are failing in the hospitality industry sometimes it's bad luck sometimes it's maybe following some trends and stuff that mm. doesn't that doesn't work mm. i think a lack of empathy for who you're serving is is big uh you have to you you have to be you know empathetic you have to understand where your guests are coming from what they're what they're thinking why they're there this and that and like you know you could it's easy to spot a trend or something like that see what somebody else is doing and then you do it and uh you know and nobody cares you know that that happens a lot too i think a lot of people overlook the the aspect of atmosphere i really do i think they overlook the fact that it's not just about what's in the glass the, what, what's in the glass is just a garnish honestly for that 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 scene I was trying to pump, like paint in your head, you know, it's like yeah, all the all the all these people are are drinking together and the vibe is right, the music is right, and then they sip. What are they sipping now? Now you got to think. Oh, nice cold stirred Manhattan, you know, or a nice rock hard ice ball in their old fashioned. That's cool, but for me, a sterile environment with like no decoration, like like my apartment. Like some bars I've seen look like my apartment and I don't want to drink here. So it's like, I don't know. I'm always a darker bar kind of guy, but I know, understand there's a lot of day bars that have like open atmosphere and like um, my restaurant in Jersey is very open uh, and natural light um, outdoor cafe. So you, your drinks have to match that shit. You know, everything's got to match. It's all going to make sense and come together. And the more mileage you have, the more times again, you try, um, you got to learn from every mistake you make and hopefully you can find where you belong in the industry. And, and when I say in the industry, I mean, in, in your local industry, like, like mm -hmm. what's going on in your city, 
Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? What works in my place where, where in, in New Jersey, here? yeah, what works in my place in Jersey don't work out here and vice mm -hmm. versa. It, they're two completely different programs, completely different set. Um, there are some things that remain the same, such as like inventory management, um, the 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 posture of the bartenders and how they 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 greet you with you know like they're ready to they're again like 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 guard dogs you know <laughs> you come up to their gate you come up to their gate they're gonna pounce on you what do you need what's up give it to me you know what do you want and, uh, in the most charming way possible too not in like a mean guard dog but you know but they're they're on it they're alert they're ready to go at least that's what we try to do you know obviously you know we got bad nights or some sometimes it doesn't work out but mm. that's that's the goal at least mm -hmm. that's like like what i try to put out so that's relatively the same across the board but the products are completely different depending on the season depending on on the the uh the region or whatever mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. i don't I like know to, i think i've been able to have a nice wide variety of places you know and to see i like this so much as you put it because the, the as you said the drinks are the garnish actually of of the whole atmosphere of the whole everything because people are not coming just for the drinks they are coming for something else for something more yeah than, than you are maybe drinks. you'll get maybe you'll get like the the people that do just follow the drinks you know they follow a lot of people like drink makers that just make drinks on instagram you know what i mean yeah and yeah. and they could they have time to make these beautiful works of art which look beautiful and great but then they go to your bar and it's like where's all the where's all the shit you know it's like i don't have time for all that shit you know what i mean <laughs> like and it's like a lot of the, the 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 foodies you know the people that that focus on stuff like that they'll come to your bar once or twice and you'll never see them again mm. you know because they're, they're, they're gonna look for the next thing they're gonna look for the next thing there's a lot of people like that you know i don't want to i don't like to paint with a broad brush i don't want to say everybody's like that but there's a lot of people like that that when people focus too much on the drink they're going to attract people that only care about the drink and they're always looking for something new so mm -hmm. they'll come in they'll have one or two drinks you'll never fucking see them again meanwhile the people that live right around the corner from you these are the people you want to see every damn day you know the people who are right here the people who are right in front of you it's like that's the least that's that's how i look at things uh obviously you want to be able to show even people that 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 don't even care to show that you have some skills and this and that. But I think you got to develop trust amongst your local community first and the people that are coming, mm. people that you're serving, and then you could go crazy. So I think maybe that's one reason why I go off on all these weird tangents. I talk too much. I'm sorry. That's okay. That's, that's the purpose <laughs> of this episode of this podcast. I want yeah, I to hear you. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. But see, my problem is I'm, I'm not, the, I'm not the most educated man. So sometimes I have a hard time to, Uh, saying how I feel. That's why I always have a good time with my podcast because I listen back and some of the shit I say doesn't make any sense whatsoever. <laughs> but up, <laughs> but I, I, it makes sense to me. Yeah. You know, it makes sense to me. But I know it doesn't make sense to anybody else. So that's why I try to use a lot of analogies. You know, like the bulldog, like good. the bulldogs yeah, guarding yeah, the gate yeah, and shit. Yeah, but it creates the image in the head. Not literally, crazy. but the idea. You know, get the dwarf idea. So that, that, that could be a problem. Sometimes uh, just businesses could fail with uh, bad partnerships. You know, you got to be careful who you get into business with. Mm. Um, bad, bad partnerships can make, can make everything. We could have a successful business on paper, but sometimes, you know, if you have the wrong partners uh, on the back end, uh, who knows what could happen, you know. God forbid I haven't run into to many problems on that end, you know. Like I've, 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 been, I've been lucky in that regard. Mm. Um, but overall, that's something to look out for your partnerships, um, having, having too many partners that, that do the same job could be tricky as well. Like you really want a nice versed, you know, you want somebody that could do the admin stuff. You want somebody that could be the creative person. You want somebody that, that, that handle all the food or whatever. Maybe some person could do all that. So you want some people that are, are of different backgrounds to partner up with and stuff like that. People that know the, other, the yeah. legal, the legal shit. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, so that's really important. You, you can't, yeah. Um, managing money, obviously, uh, when you're building a place, if you put too much money into the place, mm. you know, uh, you open up without, a, without a, a lot of money in the bank. That's hard to, to fight back, you know, yeah. because you can't be like dynamic because like you can't spend any more money on, on doing events and doing cool shit because you spent too much money on other things. That's something to look out for, for mm. sure. 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I don't know. Like, it, listen, if anybody's listening to this podcast and they're relying on me to tell them why their business either failed or did it, I mean, you, you, you got, I don't know, man. Like, I think you should. Uh, <laughs> you got some problems, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Is it, the numbers don't lie. Numbers but your don't guests lie. don't lie. Yeah, 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 the yeah, numbers yeah. don't lie. Your guests don't lie. Your staff don't lie. It's like mm. you know, they're all. It's all right in front of your face. You just, just have listen. to maybe look a little harder. Listen. Yeah, 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 yeah listen. exactly. There you go. Yeah, that, that's, that's like even even more. Listen, listen to listen to the to everything. You know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then you got to have the the fortitude. You got to have the courage to to make tough decisions, and you have to have the courage to you know just do do the right thing, or sometimes do what's the right thing for business might be the wrong thing for somebody else, you know, it might, you know, yeah, you might hurt some people along the way, but you don't want to, obviously I like to, to my whole career, I would try to live with uh, some sort of uh, what's the word integrity. You know, mm-hmm. I try to be, be as, be as uh, have a high level of integrity. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you make decisions that affect other people and you got to, uh, I don't know, deal with it yeah yeah that's you gotta that's deal with it life. yeah yeah and learn from it. Yeah. after all that's life good so the 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 main question the the question that uh, intrigued me most is the 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 question what is hospitality so it's a it's a general concept but for you for steve schneider what is hospitality uh i'm guessing it's i mean it's the it's the method in which you present your your service or your product, you know, a service. Obviously, uh, Danny Meyer talks about this shit a lot, but it's like, you know, service is, uh, you know, give a menu, take an order, get the money, see you later. You know, the <laughs> hospitality is is how how the place feels. Like I was saying, the ambiance it goes from like general chit chat to like to like the music, the vibe, everything I was trying to say, that's kind of the part of the hospitality style is, is taking the atmosphere into consideration. Um, is the place serious? Is it not serious? Um, you gotta, there's no wrong answer here, but is it like genuine hospitality or do you just provide really good service, you know, and it's mm-hmm. okay. Like it all just depends on what kind of vibe you want to put out. But for me, Hospitality is the method in which you present whatever product and, the, and whatever service you want to provide. Hospitality is your method. Mm-hmm. What are you? Are you a comedian? Are you funny? Are you, are you, are you like serious? Are you like a lovable grumpy asshole? You know, um, like, like who are you, you know, as you work, you know, and you know, my advice would be to be yourself, you know, be yourself. Cause that's how uh, hospitality comes off as authentic. You know, if you mm. try to be someone you're not, yeah, if you try to be someone you're not, you're not going to have authentic hospitality. You might provide great service. You know, you might be there. You get the money, you bake the order, the drink's great, this and that. But I think genuine hospitality is just being yourself am- amongst the, the atmosphere, you know? Nice. Actually, this was the, the next sense. question that I wanted to ask you. <laughs> How can we offer genuine hospitality? And as you said, Lydia, being yourself helps a lot because the only thing that you have and nobody in the world have it, it's yourself, like your personality. Yep. Inject your yeah. personality in, in the services. And and here's the thing, like you could only be yourself, you know? And it's like, yeah. obviously, you know, you got to sometimes bite your tongue. You're going to encounter a lot of assholes, you know, and they're just serving, you know, and you're drinking, but you got to highlight the good ones. And if this is what you really love to do, you got to be yourself and you got to let negativity sort of bounce off you, you know? If yourself is not taking shit from anyone, then you might be in the wrong, you might be in the wrong business. <laughs> yeah. Cause like, you got to take a lot of shit from people. You got to kiss some ass, you know, you got to do your, you got to, you got to do what you got to do to get the job done. Um, but for me, I, I, I've been called every freaking name you could possibly think of. And it just bounces. I don't even care at this point. Um, I just like to focus on the people who are genuinely excited to be at the bar. And there's plenty mm-hmm. of those. There's a lot of people that go out because they want that same, atmospheric feeling that I want and that that's the guests that we get and those are the people I relate to so I focus my energy on them As somebody calls me asshole all right here you to drink get out get away from me whatever next you know yeah, and you just yeah, let yeah. it bounce off you yeah yeah because if you got thin skin in this business um you're gonna have a hard time and it's the business ain't for everyone it really isn't you know you gotta you gotta have some layer of 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 you know empathy 
some layer of desire and a lot of fortitude and a lot mm. of thick skin. Mm, nice, yep. nice. That's in my personal opinion from my experiences. Obviously, somebody could probably tell you something completely different, but that's the other beauty of this business. Exactly. Is that there's no yeah. one. There's no one way to look at this business. Exactly. No, it's what works yeah. for you. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. that's so nice uh, because people are perceiving differently hospitality according to their experience, their the place where where are living. Okay. That's fascinating. That's what uh, intrigues me so much about this concept of hospitality. Everybody is perceiving it differently, and as you yeah. said, it there is no uh, wrong answer. No, there's no wrong answer whatsoever, you know, mm. but, uh, and you shouldn't let anybody else dictate what, what you, how you do anything, how, how, you, what product you put out, how you do business. You shouldn't let anybody, um, tell you how to do it. You know, mm. it's got to come from you. You could get ideas, you could get inspiration, but at the end of the day, you got to be yourself. And it's like, I'm watching basketball here. You know, it's, it's like, the best players are on the court and the best team's going to win. You know, it's like, like if you're really good at hospitality, if it's in your blood, if you're good, you're going to be good. Trust me. You know, like if you're trying to be somebody you're not, I don't know. We'll see. You know, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. you might, you might have a harder time. You know, you could still be successful. You could still be in the business for a long time, but I just don't think it'll be as fulfilling uh, mm -hmm. as if it comes naturally. Mm -hmm. And this business mm -hmm. for everybody. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. Indeed. Uh, I know that you travel a lot. You, you see a lot of bars. And I have a, a, a tough question here. Which is the most memorable hospitality experience that you ever felt, but as a guest? And why it was so memorable? Just oh, what, what's on top of mind? What's the, the most memorable visit that you had in the bar? Well, well, that's a tough question. I mean, first I'll, I guess I'll talk about just in general, like, in general, what makes me feel good, like like hospitality things that people have, no, like nothing better than than the other. But when I travel a lot, if I could feel a little at home, then I feel good. You mm. know, like as a bartender, like I try to use my travel experiences to if I meet somebody from wherever, from Sydney. I've been to Sydney. I don't know. I'll try to throw out a couple words to let them know that I've been there. You know or I had a shitty bottle of like Bundaberg rum. I would always have one at employees only with terrible Australian rum. And they'd come in, uh, yeah, well, you're Australian here, have a shot of this stuff. And I gave him a shot of like, like Bundaberg. And that's funny as hell. They're like this guy, you know, cause for a second they're traveling and it's like, Hey, this person, this person gets me, you know? Mm. So that kind of stuff, you know, when they know what I like to drink and they, and they like, then they, they make it for me, you know, as soon as I get in there, that's kind of cool too. Um, you know, just that, that, that relationship you have, you know, and not, never overbearing service, never too much. One thing I don't like, is just like being offered way too many shots and shit. Like I've been trying to slow that down. Like by offering, when I was younger, I used to, Hey, hey buddy, Hey shots. It's like <laughs> adults don't really want that shit anymore. You know, it's like, I'd rather just get what I want promptly and nicely minimal, uh, you know, nice, nice chat, nice small talk, you know, that's that's something for me like less is more i guess i could say less mm. is more for me um mm. just being uh, being all reliable that's that's what i try to be and that's what i i i like when bartenders are but i'm not i don't go into bars and judge bartenders or anything like that i'm not one of those assholes some people are i'm, I'm i don't know i just uh i just like uh, it doesn't take much for me to be happy to enjoy myself but as i'm talking I got to think of this one thing because it kind of coincides with my feeling of knowing where you're from. This was in, I don't remember the name of the bar. It won uh, like world's best bar once. I don't remember the name, but uh, it's, um, it's in London. I forget what hotel. Dandelion. Bar? Dandelion. Oh, Dandelion. 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 Yeah. Was that, that's a bar, right? Yeah. In yeah. London. Dandelion. Yeah. 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 Dandelion. Yeah. Ryan's. Yeah. 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 I, I was there. I stayed in the hotel one time. It was during like London cocktail week many years ago. And uh, bartender, Lorenzo Antonori. Are you familiar with him? I think he's in Korea or, or, or uh, Hong Kong right now. He's got a new, I think he's got a new place in Hong Kong called okay. Capri or something. Lorenzo, yeah, yeah, Italian guy. So I'm at the bar and this guy sits down next to me. And it didn't happen to me, it happened to the guy next to me, but I thought it was hilarious. Uh, he sits down and the guy orders a drink and Lorenzo is talking to me and then he just talks to the guy. He goes, uh, where are you from? guy goes uh detroit he goes ah detroit huh like uh robocop 
you know? <laughs> and I just thought it was the funniest <laughs> shit, right? That this Italian guy here in London, he knew where Detroit was, not because, like, you know, never mind the, the sports teams or the fact that we make the cars there, you know, the car was shit was invented there, you know? No, no, he only remembered Detroit for fucking Robocop, right? <laughs> And uh, I looked over at the guy. I was like, I, I bet you weren't expecting to hear that shit today. You know? Yeah, yeah. Like, Absolutely. <laughs> so I, I call him RoboCop now every time I see him. But it's the coolest reference. So now that makes me want to get obscure character references from like all places that I can like, <laughs> that I can like throw out there. I, I didn't, to be honest, I didn't, I didn't even know RoboCop took place in Detroit. I forgot all about it. But um so now I'm trying to learn like like you know all these like little towns and shit where there's like some shitty movie or whatever was made you know. <laughs> to bring it back yeah. yeah when somebody comes yeah yeah if I ever meet anybody from whatever from <laughs> let's say I don't know somewhere in Tennessee you know I'm not gonna mention you know freaking Elvis or anything I'll mention uh um, I don't know something something weird something off <laughs> off meta yeah 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 <laughs> like Robocop that's weird yeah, yeah that's weird <laughs> so for me that was great because it was like that fu that's fucking funny. <laughs> This guy kind of gets me, but not really, but he does. He gets me, but he doesn't. I mean, he he tried. It was awesome. Like, I love this guy. Like, I, I loved it. I loved Lorenzo before that, but I, I loved him even more then. So good and, joke. Uh, I, it's always memorable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So good. So good. And it's like, yeah, it was such an innocent, it was such an innocent moment of hospitality, a real, honest, innocent moment. And uh, yeah, it's just uh, that shit made me laugh so much, and I still laugh about it. And uh, <laughs> even I don't know I if Lorenzo's going to see even this, but I, I laughed oh, yeah, about yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. You should talk to Lorenzo's funny as he's a funny guy, and he uh, he's got some stories as well. He worked at uh, Savoy, he worked at the Beaufort Bar, he worked at Dandelion, he went to uh, Charles H in Korea. Mm. Now I believe he's got a place in Hong Kong called Capri, and mm. good guy, nice. Italian guy, well spoken. <laughs> <laughs> it's still yeah. funny. I, 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 think, I fucking love that guy. I think when yeah. I will see him, I will start laughing. I can imagine Robocop. Yeah, the Robocop. Yeah, hopefully everybody sees this and they can all <laughs> commend. Make sure you give Lorenzo a round of applause for his Robocop reference. It was memorable. It was memorable. And you traveled a lot and you visited a lot of bars, but you remembered Lorenzo. It was real. It was yeah. real, honest, innocent moment of just <sighs> pure hilarity and just... I don't know. It was just so warm and <laughs> hard to explain, but it made me feel something. I felt it, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Robocop. Yeah. Good. Nice, nice. Funny shit. But also, about, but like what I'm talking about, really good hospitality as well. Um, if you go to Vegas and you go to them flare bars, them flare bartenders, they are, they're awesome. Mm, yeah. they, they, they're, they're for me. They're, they're so good. They, they have more like of a of like a cocky kind of feel like the show off kind of feel but that's kind of their job mm -hmm. but the but they're they're super super cool at dealing with people and they have to have like positive energy at all times if you go to like fuel bar or carnival court um or like you know any of those kind of flare places and stuff and you'll see uh you'll see uh that kind of energy too i also like that kind of energy hospitality but it only works in that atmosphere you know if you try to have that kind of attitude in, a, in like a slower cocktail bar. I don't think it'll work and shit like that. Yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah. You you adapt your your, your hospitality on the on the venue you are working in. Yep, absolutely. You yeah, you gotta be... know. Uh, I always say, listen. Here are your limits. Be yourself within the confines of my limits. Here, you know. <laughs> ah, it's like yeah, yeah. It's so never nice. like this is how you do things, dude. I I never want to hire a bunch of me's, you know, a bunch of people who are just going to be me and do what I say and do what I do and have my same sort of style. I want to give freedom for them to find their own way mm. in this business, to be themselves, of course, within the, the confines of the, of the story we're trying to tell, of the energy and the vibe we're trying to tell. It's got to fit in with amongst there, but within then you pick mm -hmm. it up and then when you have your own place, then you can, you can expand that as long as you want, as far mm -hmm. as you want. You know what I mean? Mm, nice. But for me, my, my area of be yourself is quite far. I can't even fit it on the screen. I'll have to back up some. <laughs> but I'm pretty lenient, man. I'm pretty lenient. As long as you're doing your job, you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm pretty lenient. As long as you have that, that go-getter sort of, you know, like aggression to you. Not like angry, but like just that hyped energy. I need that, you know? I need mm -hmm. the pit bulls, you know? Talking yeah. about yourself, what, what are your, your top three or five strategies for being an amazing host? 
like you said about the limits, but for you, what are the strategies that, that, geez, that you use inside those limits? Well, geez, um, I guess it just takes a lot of experience. So just feeling people out and seeing what they want. You know what I mean? Like how they are as a person. You could tell right away if, if someone doesn't give a shit about you, you know, and don't take it to heart. It's all right, cool. Then just that's someone you provide service to. That's that's a that's the service person. That's the person that wants service. You give them the service. But you could tell people who are who are into what you're doing, and then you can just kind of quick joke, quick one liner, something like that. Something unoffensive right off the bat. If you try to get too offensive or too if you try to get too edgy, especially today, you can turn a lot of people off. So you got to kind of watch your mouth too. But um, I mean, I, I, honestly, just look them someone in the eyes. You can tell a lot by looking at them, you know, just look them in the eyes and peer into their soul. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it's, it's pretty, you could kind of tell if you really try when you look at somebody to, to see how they're feeling or at least anticipate what they're going to order or how they're going to act and then act accordingly. So you have to be able to to change, to mold, to a lot of different situations. Mm. You have to be patient. You have to be patient, which something, as I'm getting older, I'm finding it harder to be patient. Dude, I'm a business owner, and if somebody's going to talk shit to me, it's like, you think I want to hear that shit? So it's like harder for me to... I told you earlier that negativity kind of bounces off me, but like, it, I try. I have to force myself because like, when I was younger, it's like, hey, whatever, fuck you. But now it's like, man, I'm working my ass off here, and like, you know, and you You're try to like say, my body yeah, 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 you know, that's one thing I think as I'm getting older, I'm, I'm kind of, I kind of want a little bit more respect. And I think I need to shed that shit because when I was younger, respect was the last thing I, I cared about. <laughs> when it came. I was like, yeah, I don't give a shit, whatever. Oh yeah. Dude, this guy don't respect me. Big deal. You know, like whatever. Like I didn't care. I don't know. But now that I guess I'm, I'm trying to be some level of professional, I don't know, but I'm, I'm, at least maybe the last two years was like that. But now, like the last year and a half, I think I'm going back the other way. I'm trying to go back in time and remember. The, remaining the, young. The eh? good time. Who gives a fuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to I'm trying to, to work on myself like that and not be so frustrated or angry. I mm -hmm. think it's like when I first started, you know, 18, 19 years old behind the bar. It was, I was trying to prove something and I wouldn't let anybody talk shit or do anything like that. And then, like, in my 20s, it's like, well, say whatever you want. It gives a shit. And then in my 30s, it was like, eh, fuck you, man. <laughs> I think it came, like, full circle. And, and now, hopefully, in my 40s, my late 30s and 40s, it'll go up where I'm just like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I'm just trying yeah. to, yeah, yeah. I guess that's the way life goes. You know what I mean? Yeah, but, yeah. Cycles, cycles. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but you got to, yeah. But uh, I, I guess that's another thing. Yeah, just look somebody in the eye. And genuinely be empathetic and put yourself in their shoes and try to, to provide what they want, whether that's hospitality, whether that's just service, mm. um, whether it's a little bit of knowledge. You know, that's why it's good to know the products that you have. It's good to know the cocktails, know, know the food menu. Um, communication is very important as well, because like nobody likes to. And employees only, I'm just going to talk employees only in Singapore because that's what I'm, what, where I've been handling here. Like we don't have a host and I think like, the floor manager is kind of the host, mm. but they're not stationed at the front like a host at a restaurant. They're just doing their thing. So when someone walks in, it's really important that the bartender recognizes this person right away and greets them because nobody just wants to like be in a place and stand around and not be greeted because they'll leave right away. It's as quickly as they walked in, they'll walk right out. And that's just a shame. Like I hate when that happens. Because it's like we just lost out on a customer, potential future customer too, potential repeat customer, uh, because we didn't say hello. And you mm. saw them, you saw them, you looked at them, and you, and you didn't say anything. You just pretended like we were dead because you were busy or some shit. It's like, no, you gotta, you gotta just, hey, how you doing? Yes, somebody will be around. There you go. And then that's it. Boom. No. Or hey, come over here. Yeah, the management manager will come see you. Come, I don't know, just something yeah yeah zero in something that's him, important yeah. some kind of acknowledgement you know nobody wants to be feel ignored mm. that's why you know it's like especially like you know we allow standing room at the bar and we used to be you know several people deep and stuff so it's like a good way to to, to get people at least to chill out a bit is to give them a menu if you give them a menu they know that you know they're there mm. give them a menu let them read a little bit while you're doing other things and then come back 
oh, what can I get for you? Oh, here's some water. Don't worry, I'll be right there. Take your water. They just some people are more difficult than others, but basically, if you could, if you keep people in the loop of what's going on, that you know they're there, that you got them, then they feel safe. They feel comfortable. They feel like they're like they're a customer. They feel like they're welcome. If you just ignore them, they're like, yeah. yeah, yeah. So acknowledgement of, of your of your guest is really is really important. Communication, of course. Hey, uh, I recognize them. I tell the manager, hey, uh, we got somebody at the door. You know, go check them out. Okay, cool. There, boom, boom, boom. Sit down. Do we have any tables? Ask hey, how many tables we got. So if I see a group of three and I know we got a table, like we have two tables open, boom. I'm like, yeah, we got a table. Come to manager instead of saying, uh, I don't know if we have a table. Uh, let me, uh, you know, because like as soon as you look lost in this business, when you look lost or you look under pressure. Customers will eat you alive, brother. Yeah, yeah. They're going to know when you're under pressure, at least in my experience, where I come from. Uh, maybe it's in the New Yorker in me. But when someone sees you under pressure, they know they're going to try to take advantage of you and stuff. <laughs> when, I, when, they're busy, when I'm busy and they got to wait, shit, they're always trying to squeeze out. Something. I've been waiting for 10 minutes. It's like, no, you haven't. But, you know, no, you, you haven't. Just right. came. <laughs> yeah, you know, this, yeah, that's it. I miss that shit as much as I'm, I'm making fun of it. But you know, you can relate to that. You know how that. You know how that yeah, feeling. Yeah, but you yeah, gotta yeah. keep it cool, man. And if you're just cool with them, and you're like, yeah, no, man, sorry, I'll be right there. Sometimes you gotta apologize for things you're not really sorry about. Mm. Just gotta do it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, but that's you know, the, that's the, the industry. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. It's working it. Yeah, you gotta. I love working, working crowds, man. That's one thing for me. A great bartender, just like works the crowd manages the crowd like mm, yeah. yeah dictates yeah. the flow of the room you know what i mean yeah and that's i don't know because the room the room has energy energy uh, i sound like such a fucking hippie or whatever <laughs> but i firmly believe i firmly believe in energy um like you know you could tell do you ever like text somebody and they text you back and you're like something's wrong and mm. you're like you felt it you felt the energy you know yeah yeah and that's the same idea in a bar when you're like when you're it's even more so i think in a bar than like when you text somebody and they give you a response and you're like some shit's up something's up mm -hmm. so it's like you got to recognize this shit and recognize the energy and recognize the when vibe, it's off feel the energy yeah. Re and then know how to fix it recognize if it's off if it's fucked up uh maybe take a step back yourself go on a break you know if things are too much go on a fucking break real quick have a cigarette if you smoke or whatever uh, come back and just like recalibrate yourself and it's like when you walk in again because if you look at the same bar over and over sometimes you know you can't see things but if you walk out and you walk back you're like all right boom the lights are too bright your, your you mind go. is clear yeah 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 you can yeah, see with yeah, different yeah, eyes yeah. yeah and if and if you have good colleagues and good co-workers they're gonna watch your back you know they're gonna watch your back and uh and you should watch their back too if they need to clear their head to recalibrate themselves mm. so be it just you know Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you got to be considerate to, to your colleagues at all times that's what my thing mm -hmm. try to be super super uh we're almost there one hour it's uh, unfortunately it flew away <laughs> yeah. always when uh -huh. i'm talking about these things it, time flies uh, about it, sure it but... i'm having a blast talking to you you're good at this man how many episodes <laughs> have you done so far thank you uh 127 <laughs> but with interviews is only 27 or 28 or 29 something i did 100 so me, by Paul. myself <laughs> so it took you 126 people to get to me huh yeah hmm. I, don't know I, I don't know if i should feel <laughs> you're hard to reach yeah. huh? <laughs> oh okay okay i'll blame it on me okay okay <laughs> okay no, I, um, I who was the it... first person you chose who was the first person uh, it was a friend of mine from from here from, uh, from oh okay from a personal friend so, okay yeah, okay it okay. was just for me to to take it easy then a guy from romania okay. then i went slowly i i started go, uh, going abroad but okay i'm not i'm not offended that it's okay it's fine yeah i took it slowly because i had to learn <laughs> it's a skill you know it as, no, it as a podcaster how it is it's not it is. easy to talk in front of a laptop and a mic <laughs> it's not it is like, and i'll tell you it, it's it's a big it's big when you because I've, I've done quite a few of these you know and when you have someone that's not good at the interviews they ask you like the like lame questions and something <laughs> like that it, it could be a drag man yeah yeah and you kind of feel like you're a part of something bad as it's <laughs> happening you know what i mean yeah. yeah yeah and it's like you can't be a dick either you know like they they you know like what are you gonna do so 
you're good. You're a good one. Thank I you. appreciate Thank it. you very no? much. There's a lot of good ones out there. And you're a good one too. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I, I enjoy it very much. And uh, I have two more questions. Two more questions. Okay. And, and we, we read it. one question because we are at Hospitality Secrets. We have to talk about some secrets. And uh, the question is, what is your secret sauce for being so successful in the hospitality industry? Is there any secret sauce? Man, I'm going to go back to just saying, well, hospitality in and of itself, maybe, but I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer it in my own way and just talking about being in the hospitality industry for me, the secret sauce for me, just being in the industry mm. is longevity, consistency, you know, and maybe the secret sauce is just minding your own business, doing you, you know, doing your thing, mind your own business. Don't worry. Don't so get so caught up about what other people are doing. Um, follow, you know, trust in yourself, follow yourself. Stick to your guns. Know what works for you, uh, even if it's gonna, you know, if it's gonna cost you a few fans, you know. Um, be be you, you know. Mind your own business. Get it done, and uh, get, get it done for a long time, and get it done consistently, year after year after year. Not one or two years, not three years, not four years, not five years. I mean, if you want to build a career in this business, you got to think of it as a career, not just as a stepping stone for something else. Yeah. You know, you can use different aspects of this business to be a stepping stone for your career, but you got to think of it as my career is hospitality. Um, what matters most to me, you know, mm. is am I going to do something because that, that's a trend because that's what's cool, you know, but it doesn't really work for me. And I kind of know it doesn't work, but I'm going to do it because that's the only reason I'm going to get recognized by like some global, uh, you know, award fucking whatever. Um, or are you just going to do you and uh, everybody around in your community is going to know who's the baddest motherfucker on the block, you know, and uh, that's kind of so that's, that's, the, secret that's the mindset I try to so take. Secret. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the mindset I try to take. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no secret to it. It's pretty straightforward, man. Uh, you know, you got to you got to have it. You got to have it. <laughs> <laughs> and you got to have it for a long time. You can't have it for a short it, amount of time. Stick with it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You can't have it for a short amount of time. You got to be consistent, uh, shift over shift, year after year. You're gonna have a you're gonna have a lot of ups and downs. It ain't gonna be pretty. Um, you know, this business is at its core. It's pretty easy. Mm. Someone walks in, they ask you for something. You make something. You get the money. They're on their way. Hopefully, you see them again. Be nice along the way. That's easy in theory, but to be good at it. I mean, it takes, it takes a lot of mental strength and it takes a lot of experience to, 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 and it takes a lot of mistakes to, to learn from in order to like be really, really good at it. Mm. And I think, I don't know, I've been lucky so far. I'm still, I'm still fucking up, but you know, we, we still you are can't, always you can't dwell on it. Yeah. You can never dwell on it. You know, learn from just, the mistakes. Uh, when I was younger, yeah, when I was younger, I used to be a little harder on myself. Now it's like, oh, fuck. You know, <laughs> you just try to fix problems. Yeah, yeah. That's what bars are now when you're a business owner. It's like, it's like you think you'd have this grand, glorious business, but all it is is a bunch of problems. Everything's breaking down. You got to fix it or worry about the PL or staff member ain't happy. You know, somebody quit on you during the pandemic. I don't know. There's so many things. So many, many things. Problems. That, yeah, yeah. There's just problems that you got to solve and just try to see what's going to be best for everybody at the end of the day. And that's mm. always a tough decision to make because, you know, sometimes uh, some people feel a little slighted, you know, um, no. what are you going to do? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Hopefully that helps answer the question. It helps own. a lot. It helps a lot. And yeah. I'm, I'm asking this question because I want for, for the listeners to, to, to see that there is no secret, secret sauce, secret formula that only the chosen ones knowing it and applying it. It's about little things done well with longevity, as you said, day by day doing things and learning from your mistakes. There is no magic formula, magic stick to do things. At the, at the end of the day, I could I could tell you how to shoot a basketball, right? But I can't tell you how to make it in the basket, you know? Like that's going to take you practicing and missing and missing mm, and practicing. And eventually nice. you're going to keep making them shots if you're good enough. You know, there's some people, they're never going to make that shot, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> And, uh, you know, but, but if you, the more work you put in, the more practice you put in, the more you practice your hospitality, the better you're going to be. And that, mm. that's, that's just the practice, anything practice your flair, the more flair you practice, nobody is born with good flair. You got to practice that shit, you know, yeah. like, yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. You have to drop, you have to drop the bottles over, drop the tins over and over again until you don't drop anymore. 
Same thing goes with many aspects of life and hospitality is no different. You got to practice. When you handle the guests wrong, sometimes you got to look in the mirror and say, fuck, I fucked that up. How am I going to make it better for next time? Or how am I going to fix the problem that I just created? A lot of times if you fix, uh, if you get in a problem with a guest, with the customer, a lot of times it's to walk away is the best way to do it and let somebody else take over. Mm. Sometimes a fresh, a fresh bartender. And then they might be like, you know what? I, I like this person. That person sucks. And then you're just like, yeah, I do. I suck. You know, and he just kind of, yeah, yeah. And the other person match. tries to be yeah, a hero yeah, yeah, and bails. Yeah, yeah. If I spill something on the guest accidentally, I just kind of say, oh, shit, I'm sorry. And then I just kind of stop serving them. You know, I let mm. somebody else kind of take over and we switch. And then I get a new, was a new, fresh, uh, new perspective. And yeah, hopefully yeah, it can yeah. help uh, with somebody's, uh, again, you want customers for the long term, the local customers. Some, you know, some you know you're never going to see again. That doesn't mean that they deserve any less. But this, you just got to know these kind of things and, and know what's important and when to say certain things and when to do certain things. And it just takes a lot of mileage. It just takes time. It takes a lot of, longevity, lot of understanding. Longevity, and longevity, longevity said, yeah. understanding, and practice. You know, mm. you got to practice this shit. You'll never get good at it. Yeah. Mm. You can't read a book, right, and just get good. You know, you got to just put this book into play. You got to do it. You got to try it. You got to fail. You got to yeah. succeed. Yeah. I learned way more from my fuck ups than I did ever did from doing good. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because it hurts. Yeah, you you really learn yeah. from from that. Yeah, because yeah, we're not in the business of like fucking up. You know, we don't want to do that. <laughs> I, I get so sad when I know I fucking let a customer down. I know I get so sad. You know, because I'm like that's not what I want to do. But you got to shake, brush it off, and make sure don't try to make sure you don't make the same mistake twice. You know, yeah. that's kind of yeah. the name of the game. Yeah. Learn it. Yeah. Learn the mistakes. Yeah, man. So last question, it's about uh, what's your uh, number one takeaway that you really want the listeners to remember from this episode? If it would be one thing, what would you like for the listeners to remember? Uh, I don't know, Paul. Uh, I guess that's up to them, you know? I mean, I gave you my, my side of the story, you know? It's up to you guys now, you know? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> take what resonates uh, with you, yeah. <laughs> take, take what does, you know? Uh, don't let me or any other asshole tell you how you should be doing your business you know like like just you know be yourself and take away whatever whatever you, whatever you can if you took away 30 seconds of this whole hour and change good good on you if you took nothing away i'm sorry but um you know i don't think that'd be the case just uh again look look in the mirror you know focus on uh, focus on you yeah nice yeah. nice find yourself yeah yeah look at yeah. yourself yeah you could look you can find inspiration through others you know of course that's really important it's always like i've found so much inspiration through through peers and mentors and through uh other outlets that aren't even bar related you know mm -hmm. um creative stuff and things that i find in my head again just to close your eyes and put yourself in some sort of scene and stuff but at the end of the day it's i don't know i, I always put out a product that i want to put out you know mm. Yes, amazing so steve thank you very much <laughs> thank you very much for accepting the invitation it was absolutely mind-blowing i enjoyed it so much thank you very much for accepting the invitation it was i appreciate it if anybody wants to follow me on on instagram go for it. i don't post much though but um and the, i i only follow accounts that are like stupid memes and like <laughs> professional wrestling and like you know yeah like dumb shit like i <laughs> follow like really stupid shit on, on social media i don't know <laughs> but uh feel free to follow me uh i do I'll have put... projects coming up what's that oh i'll put the i'll put the the link in the description so for the listeners yeah, just click cool. on the description and you'll find uh, steve's uh, steve's instagram and 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 the bars and everything so yeah just look the if i do if i do decide to bring my podcast back it will i will be uh promoting it on on instagram for sure and uh yeah so, I I'm, so. again i just I just, because, you know, I, I edit everything myself, just like, I'm. do you edit everything as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The editing, that's a pain in the ass. If I would just record, I could record twice a week, no problem, but I got to go back and edit it, change the levels of the voice, upload it, write the fucking thing. And it's like, yeah, once, it takes time. once I opened it takes time. My, my first play five years ago here, it was very hard for me to find the time. But now that, you know, places are, well, stable-ish outside, COVID aside, they're stable and you know, everything's good. Then I got a little more time and I'm just, I'm, I'm feeling like I need something a little more creative that's bar related, but not in the bar. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we'll see, but follow me, check me out. Maybe I'll post more on social media. I don't know right now. I'm just chilling. 
Thank you very much, Steve. It was amazing. All Thank right. You for accepting. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, let me know when this thing drops, man. I can't wait. I'll share it for sure. I'll let you know. I will. I will give you everything in the the links and everything in the in the chat. So for the listeners, okay. thank you very much for staying. Thank you for uh, following uh, Steve's amazing ideas. It was super fun. That's it for today. See you next week. Cheers.